Hey, what's up? Tim Warner here. I figured that I'd spend 10 minutes or so with you teaching you how to manage your Cloud Shell environment in Microsoft Azure. Here we are logged into the portal, and you've probably seen the Azure Cloud Shell, at least I hope you have. If we come up here to the global navigation and click the Cloud Shell button, the first time you come in here, you'll see this you have no storage mounted indication. And the idea is that Azure Cloud Shell persists your home folder in a Docker container that spins up every time you start Cloud Shell. And Azure is able to persist your home folder and any scripts and modules and other stuff that you have that you want to persist in a storage account, specifically in a file share in the storage account. So if we just click Create Storage after specifying the subscription we want to use, Azure's going to create all of that for us, and it's going to, well, well, let's just watch what happens. Before I do, though, notice this Show Advanced Settings. That's where we would go for greater control over your cloud drive. But I'm guessing that the first time you came in here, you just clicked Create Storage. And I want to make sure you understand exactly what happens when you do that. Okay, it says your cloud drive has been created in, and then it gives us our subscription ID, our resource group, our storage account, and our file share. Now, the naming that Azure uses is not particularly user-friendly. According to the Microsoft documentation, they suggest that each of your administrators, developers, Azure folks, create their own storage account to persist their own cloud shell. But I'm going to show you in just a minute how you could feasibly use a single storage account with multiple file shares if you want to have a little bit more efficiency. To answer a common question, yes, storage accounts do cost money, but what Microsoft does is creates the storage account with the cheapest possible options. Let me show you. Let me minimize the cloud shell and refresh my storage accounts blade. And so you see that Microsoft has created this storage account. It starts with CS for Cloud Shell, and then it gives you a, a really ugly GUID, like I said. It comes in as a general purpose V2 storage account. Microsoft will create a resource group called Cloud Shell Storage, and then the region. And I'm not sure exactly how the region is selected. I believe it has to do that when you click Cloud Shell, you actually get redirected or connected to an Azure Traffic Manager profile, which based on your client IP address, you'll be redirected to the closest geo region where Microsoft has a whole pool of Docker containers all set and ready to go. So I'm imagining that that's why East US was selected. But what if that's not your home region, you see? So these are some of the issues I want to straighten out with you in this lesson. Let's bring back our Cloud Shell environment. Looks like it's still spinning up, so it hasn't yet created the Cloud Share for us but it's going to be called, as you can see here, CS, and then my user account name, and then a GUID. Again, if you want control over that, you're going to have to take control over your cloud drive. The very first time you go through this process of provisioning a storage account, that'll be the longest before you get to your prompt. Subsequent runs of Cloud Shell should be much faster because you already have your home folder persisting in the file share and so forth. Now, some other points of potential confusion I want to iron out. There's two different containers you can get into here. You can either go to a containerized PowerShell. This is PowerShell Core, by the way, prompt. Or you can get to a Bash prompt. These both use the same underlying cloud drive, so it doesn't matter which you use. I'm going to use the PowerShell option here. Now, let me minimize Cloud Shell, and let's refresh our view and come into that CS22 storage account that Azure created for us. Now, if we collapse the Essentials pane and come over to the file service, we can see that Cloud Share. This is a file share that we'll be using for our home folder environment in Cloud Shell. In there is a hidden folder called .cloud console. Anything else we add here is just going to be up to us. For instance, before I forget, let's click Upload, and we can upload a file or other resources directly to our cloud drive. You can also do install module, by the way, if you want to hit the PowerShell gallery. I'm going to grab a PS1 file just randomly and pop it in there. And so this is your workflow. You're going to populate that file share with the assets that you want to always have available in your Cloud Shell environment. As I was saying a moment ago, this .cloud console, if you go in there, don't touch this folder and don't mess with this 5 gig.img file. This is how Azure persists your home folder. 
because you're going to connect to a different container every time you start a new Azure Cloud Shell session. Microsoft or the Azure Fabric will unpack this disk image file. It's acc underscore username dot image. It's a fixed size, 5 gigs. So there's your storage capacity. And that's also good because you're charged for your storage footprint in that storage account. And it's nice to have the predictable cost. Each user is going to have a 5 gig footprint for his or her cloud drive. I also want you to see this information balloon. Backup is not enabled for this file share. And if you click that banner, it brings you to this enable backup screen and says that we'll need to create a recovery services vault and we can create a backup policy to back up the file share. This is something that I would strongly suggest you look into doing because you definitely want to make sure as you're using Cloud Shell that you have the ability to get your documents and your settings back, get that image file back basically, which is your entire home folder, in the event that another administrator maybe wax the file share or deletes the storage account. So the Recovery Services Vault has a built-in capability to back up file shares. Stepping out of the .cloud console folder, another thing you can do is do snapshot backups. Notice that here in the context of the file share, we can open the menu and click Create Snapshot. And you can use, say, Azure Automation to run a snapshot backup on a schedule. The Recovery Services Vault is just another way to do it. So you could do Recovery Services Vault as a clean way to back up the file share, or you could do programmatic or manual snapshots. It's up to you and your preference. So back into the Cloud Shell, let's see what other kind of trouble we can get into. When you're in the PowerShell Cloud Shell, instance, you're given access to your Azure Drive where you can do DIR and you can browse your subscription resources that way. It's a PS Drive courtesy of the ships module. But I'm going to do CS tilde to go to my home folder. And if I do a DIR, we see Cloud Drive. If I CD into Cloud Drive and run another LS or DR, there's our PS1 file that we uploaded. You see what I mean? So in your home folder, you've got the Cloud Drive folder. It's not showing you that hidden Cloud Drive folder. This is just your actual contents. Let me move the split bar here just to remind you. That's what we're looking at here. It's hiding the .cloud console for us. Other things you should understand or other commands, I should say, within the shell that are Cloud Drive specific are get Cloud Drive. This is a internal PowerShell commandlet for Azure Cloud Shell, and that just echoes back all of the metadata of your Cloud Drive. Just as by way of trivia, regardless of whether you choose PowerShell or Bash, the underlying Docker container OS, in other words, the OS environment that's powering the containerized PWSH session or Bash session is Linux. We can do a uname A, whoops, if I can type, and we can see that no longer does Azure Cloud Shell use Windows Server containers. So that's get Cloud Drive. What if, for instance, we wanted to, let's minimize Cloud Shell, and let's come back to our storage accounts. If we realize that, yeah, when we first went into Cloud Shell, we just clicked Next, and now we have this wacky named storage account that has a wacky named file share, and we want to start over. How do we do that? Well, it, first of all, if somebody were to delete your cloud drive, if it's not being backed up, it's gone forever. And the next time you start Cloud Shell, you'll be forced to do a storage account. That's one thing. Another is in a more principled way, let's click Add and create a storage account that we will use as our Cloud Shell repository. So I'm going to put it in a new resource group called, appropriately enough, Cloud Shell. The storage account name needs to be globally unique. So I'll try my initials and Cloud Drive 1 and see if that works. It looks like it does. Here we can override and we can choose our home region, whatever that is. We'll want to go for the cheapest option, so standard, not premium. We'll want storage, general purpose v2, and we don't want RAGRS replication. We'll just do LRS, hot access tier. Let's go advanced, allow access. We're going to want to leave that for all networks. Blobsoft delete, data lake, no, won't worry about that. Won't worry about tags. Let's create our option. Now, in the documentation, Microsoft says you simply need contributor level access using your RBAC controls to be able to create a file share and create an environment. So if you're going to use an existing storage account that you didn't create, just make sure you have contributor level access to the storage account and its RBAC rules. So while that's cooking, let's bring back our Cloud Shell and let me maximize its view. And I'm going to show you a command here called Cloud Drive. And if I use minus question mark, the command group is Cloud Drive, and we've got two commands, mount and unmount. This is not PowerShell, by the way. That get Cloud Drive does have another command. If we do a get 
command where the noun is cloud drive, there is a dismount cloud drive, which we could use. It's part of the PS Cloud Shell utility module that, again, is local to Azure Cloud Shell. But cloud drive works just as well. Here we can do mount and unmount. I'm going to do cloud drive unmount. And it says by removing this file share, it's going to terminate our session. Are we okay with that? Y or N? I'll choose Y. You'll be prompted to create and mount a new file share on your next session. Do you want to continue? Yes. Understand that it didn't delete anything. It just unplugged our Cloud Shell environment from that existing storage account. As you can see, the CS storage account still lives. And then here's the TLW Cloud Drive 1 that we just created. I'm going to go into TLW Cloud Drive 1. Let's come down to the file service create a new file share. And again, we can give it any name we want. I'll call it cloud share with no quota. And now if we click cloud shell, we're asked what kind of environment do we prefer here? I'll choose the PowerShell. And now instead of just clicking create storage, we don't want Azure to create yet another storage account. We're going to go to show advanced settings and make sure that we're choosing the right options here. Resource group. Create new, use existing. We could create new, but I created my Cloud Shell resource group. Storage account, create new, use existing. Well, let me make sure my Cloud Shell region is correct. And now I can choose use existing TLW Cloud Drive 1. And then finally for file share, create new or use existing. This is kind of weird. I think this is a bug. Notice that it doesn't drop down and show me my Cloud Share. So I'm going to have to remember what that's called. I can see it right here. TLW, or no, that's, that's the name of the storage account. I need the file share, cloud share. There it is. So let's go cloud share. I'm surprised that doesn't drop down. So we'll sanity check our options. It looks like we want to use a new storage account that we just created ready to rock, attach storage. Okay. Well, here we are. So once again, if we CD to home user cloud drive, it's empty, of course, because we don't have anything in it. But the question now would be moving our assets from the old storage account to the new one. So for that, I would recommend a tool like Storage Explorer, free cross-platform desktop application from Microsoft. And we can simply dip into our existing old file share. There's our PS1 file. And then drill down into our new Cloud Drive file share. And we should just be able to drag and drop this puppy. Yeah, it's not letting me drag and drop, but worst case scenario, I can download it to my local system. I'll bring it down to the desktop, navigate over to my new cloud share and upload. I believe drag and drop works just fine. Yep, there it is. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. All the best to you. Thanks a lot for joining me.